So this is your overlap day kind of. All right. <clears throat> so I wasn't here yesterday to. Uh, no, I didn't actually. Uh, Miss McElliot and I walked down to the. Uh, what's the. No, not that far. The meat place. Wainuchi Meats. We got sandwiches there. Uh, well, we got sandwiches there and then we walked back and ate them here. Uh, but it was really freaking cold out there, I'll tell you what. Um, anyway, so uh, here we go. Substitute the given points into both equations to determine which ordered pair satisfies the system of linear equations. So what we're doing now is we're uh, upgrading from just one boring equation to two. Why? Yeah, no kidding. Why stop at one when you can have two? Uh, double the fun, right? So the first thing that they want us to do is just look at the points that they've given us and uh, figure out <coughs> which one of these points works for both of the equations. Jaren, will you put your phone away? Um, so if I plug zero in for x right here, what's y equal? Negative 2. So this one works for equation number 1, right? Uh, if I plug 1 in there for x, 3 times 1 is 3, minus 2 is also 1. So this one works for equation number 1. How about if I plug number 2 in there? What do you get for y? 4, yeah, because 3 times 2 is 6, minus 2 would be 4. So these two work for equation 1, okay? Uh, the equation number two is pretty simple. The y and the x equal each other, so they have to be the same. So which ones work for that? So a doesn't work, but uh, c does, and b does also, right? Because two equals two. So the one that works for both of them is one comma one. Okay, sir. Are you? Are you? Okay. So what I did is I took this point right, this number right here, plug it in for x. What do you get? And then 0 minus 2 is, and so since that's what they have is y equaling, that means this point works for this first equation. Okay? Then uh, Matthew said that this one does also, so I checked that I plugged in 1 for x. 3 times 1 is 3, minus 2 is 1, so that works too. But then this one does not, because 3 times 2 is 6, minus 2 is 4, not 2. Okay? And I did the same thing with this equation with the other one. So the point that works for both of them is 1, comma 1. Okay? Yeah, no, you're... Yeah, you're good. Um, okay, so now let's graph both of these. So we've worked on graphing uh, these linear equations before. If I'm going to graph y equals 3x minus 2... What's the y-intercept? Negative 2. So I'm going to start at negative 2. What's the slope? 3. So from this point, up 1, 2, 3, over 1, up 1, 2, 3, over 1. So if I connect those dots with a nice, uh, pretty <coughs> straight line that I'm drawing all by myself without the aid of any technology, then uh, the graph looks like that. No, I'm thinking that I might just keep them here. No, she won't even know that they're gone. Um, okay, so let's graph the other line now. So the line y equals x, what's that y-intercept? Zero, because it's y equals x plus zero. So that means I'm going to start that one right there at zero at the origin. Okay, what's the slope of that one? 1, because there's a 1 in front of the x. We don't write it, because we don't have to, but it's still there. So the slope is 1. So up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. So now if I connect those purple points with a purple line, then that line looks like that. And here's the big reveal, boys and girls, ladies and germs, cats and kittens. Where do those two lines cross? 1, comma 1 which we figured out algebraically is the point that works for both of them also. Talia? Mm -hmm. uh, well, Luis 
pointed out that this is really, you can think of it as y equals 1x plus 0. So the 0 is the y-intercept and the 1 is the slope. Okay? Huh? No, start at 0. Start at the y-intercept. Yep. 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 All right. So now you guys got it. I'm sure. That bothers me. Oh, hi. Uh, okay. So Matthew, does the point two seven work for that first equation? Really? If you plug in two for x, you get. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. All right, that works. Okay, everybody see that? Plug in 2, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7. Alrighty, how about, uh, does the next point work? They ran negative 7, 11. Nope. Uh, negative 7 times 2 is negative 14, plus 3 is negative 11, but not positive 11. Thank you for playing. Um, <coughs> okay, how about uh, 0, 5, McKenna? No. So that's the only one that works for this equation. So hopefully that works for this one also. Um, does 2, 7 work for the other equation also, Nathan? Yes. So 2 plus 5 is indeed 7. So that works for equation 1 and equation 2. So this is the uh, ordered pair that satisfies the system of linear equations. Hmm? Sweet. All right, so graph them up. Do it. Anybody want a ruler? Hmm? Oh, yeah, I'm done. Nice job. Let's uh, throw this together in some sort of a word problem situation. Uh, <coughs> it says a theater wants to take in at least $2,000 for the matinee. Uh, children's tickets cost $5 each and adult tickets cost $10 each. The theater can seat up to 350 people. Find five combinations of children and adult tickets that will help them reach their $2,000 goal. Okay, give me one. So 30 adults and 50 children. Let's check and see. How much would they make off of the 30 adults? Mm -hmm. $300, because tickets for them are $10 each, so that's $300. How much would they make off of the 50 children? You said 300 adults. Oh, okay. So that would be $3,000. Now you're good. And then how much would you get off the 50 children? If they take it $250. Okay. And that adds up to $3,250. So that is definitely more than $2,000. Okay, nice job, Matthias, top student, like I said before. Okay, somebody whose name is not Matthew, give me another combination that will work. 100 adults? I said someone whose name is not Matthew. 100 adults? 250 kids? Just 200? Okay. Uh, how much do they get off the 100 adults? thousand dollars how much will they get off of the 200 kids thousand dollars which adds up to two thousand which is on the button how much they want to make okay uh somebody else weston 150 adults and 200 children Because five combinations, yeah. Uh, so how much do they get off the 150 adults? There you go. 
And how much do they get off the 200 children? Nicely done. And so together, that makes uh, $2,500. Okay, three down, two to go. We've got another one. Okay, what's wrong with 200 adults and 200 children? Yeah, we can only sell 350 tickets. 200 adults, 150 children. Do you get it now, though? You got it now? Okay. So, did we? Oh, no, we had it flipped. This is... Yeah, because uh, we flipped the adults and the children. So, this would be uh, $2,000 from the adults. How much from the kids? No, they're only $5 a ticket, half of 1500 750 so that would give you uh, $2,750, which also meets the, uh, the goal. Okay, what do, you, what do you got? 349 adults, and who wants kids in your theater? Anyway, one children. Uh, so the 349 adults would give you $3,490. The one child would give you $5. So 3,495, so all of those work, right? Okay, so there's lots of different ways that you could solve that piece of the puzzle. All right, the Utah, okay, the Utah Jazz scored 102 points in a recent game. The team scored three, some three point shots, two point shots, and some free throws that are worth one. Uh, so now we have three variables, find five combinations of baskets that would add up to this time what needs to be exactly 102. Do you need a second? Do you have any? Do you have one? What you got? 34 threes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So they just went out there and just started bombing threes. And since they never attacked a basket, they didn't get any fouls, so all they did was make 34 three-pointers, get the 102 points. Okay. Possible. What else? Okay. So that's 0, 102, and 0. 102. Okay, you guys have very different coaching styles, but both ended up with 102 points. So, you know, that's all good. What else? Seven three pointers. Okay. So, 70, 81, 102. Okay, so Luis is taking the bounce approach. Dylan's just launching three, he's just attacking the basket. A little bit of both, it's not a bad idea. A little inside outside game. Okay, anybody else got another one? Ten, th nope, I'm done with you. Somebody else. Let's start with the ten three, shall we? Okay, Weston? Okay, nope, if you got one. A hundred, a hundred and two free throws. No twos, no threes. That would be like a five hour basketball game. So many free throws. Yeah, that's true. Yes, ma'am. 51 fouls. Ten guys foul out. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. Oh, we already did that one. That's okay. It's all right. You're thinking that's the main thing. Anybody else got one more?
Did you say one yet? Okay, so let's start with uh, Matthew's 10 threes. How many points is that? Okay, so how many points do they have left to score? 72. So give me, so now just think about twos and ones that add up to 72. 36. Okay. Okay. So that was a little trickier because there's three variables, but uh, you guys did a really nice job there, first of all, of saying make these two be zero and then just make them be all of one of those. Yeah. So that got us these three things there pretty easily. Um, and then Luis, sort of thinking outside the box there, got a nice mixed up combination. Um, but there's another way that you can do it. What uh, Weston and I basically did is if you just randomly pick one of the numbers, then you can do make it, yeah, right. Or you, or you could have done 72 ones and yeah. Um, so that's not a bad problem solving strategy. All right, number seven, use as many of the following shapes and any combinations as you need to try to fill in as much of the 12 by 12 grid as you can. So now we're playing Tetra. Um, did anybody do it? No. No? Yes? Nice. Um, so one example they said is you could use three of shape A, five of shape B, ten of shape C, two of D and six of E. So I can't really go through that up here. I mean, I could. I think when I do that, though, it grabs onto the... Oh, no, we're okay. So I got that. Do you really want me to do this? Uh-huh. What is the music? No, what's the Tetris music? Oh. That's the Tetris music? Huh. When I play Tetris, I'm so focused on the game. Okay, uh, Abby, can you do me a favor? Can you uh, sit down at the keyboard for me? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I need, uh, I need you to hit Control C twice. Did you do it? Oh, no, that's, okay, that's not what I want. Uh, sorry, Control D. Hang on, Control D, one more time. All right, and then uh, how many Bs? Oh, no, this is E. Uh, can you do Control D six, five times? And then for this one, do that uh, ten? No, so nine times. Uh, once. Nobody likes these. How many Bs did they use? Five, so you do it four times. Thanks, man. Um, okay, I'm not doing that. That's ridiculous. Uh, all right. Well, you guys should be able to do it. You, yeah, you, you can skip it. Um, yeah, you can. Okay, so now we're back to a uh, single equation that says graph each equation below, then determine if the point 3, 5 is the solution to the equation. And then we're going to find two other points that are also solutions to the uh, equation. So will you take a minute real quick? and uh, graph these two lines on your own, which I know you know how to do by your own selves.
Uh, so the way you do the fraction is like the top number is the up and the bottom number is the down. Mm-hmm. Just doing my job, ma'am. Why did they choose so many of these little gross ones? No, the top is the up. So you go up one over three. Yeah. I don't think I can do this. shouldn't. I used all of the easy ones. Yeah, that's a better idea. So I Cause now I got all these stupid ones. I don't know how to do that. Yeah, but it always feels like it's going to leave a little... I want to put that right in there. I know, but then I'm using a lot, like, I, I know, but I'm trying to, like, think about the future. Yeah, unfortunately. All right, you guys done yet? Cause I'm done. No, I'm done. This is dumb. All right, so your graph for uh, this one should have looked like y-intercept of negative one, slope of two. So it should look something like that. And then your graph of uh, this one should look like y intercept of 2, slope of 1 third. So that's going to look something like that. Good job. All right. No, that's good. Uh, okay. That's, that's good. So determine whether point three five is a solution to the equation. So if I go over onto this graph and I go over 1, 2, 3, and then up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Am I on the graph? Yes. So that means that 3, 5 is a solution to that equation. If I plugged in 3 for x, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 minus 1 is 5. Okay? Uh, what's another point that's a solution to that equation? Uh, almost the idea. 1, 1. 1, 1. Okay. 2, yep, 2, 3. Okay, so that's good. Uh, how about this one? Is the point 3, 5 on this graph? 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Nope. That one is uh, hovering above the graph, so that is the big fat no. Um, okay, what are two other points that are on the graph? 0, 2, nice one, y-intercept, always an easy target. And then how about another one? Three, three, yep, over three, up three, right there, three, three, okay? Uh, okay, play again with uh, 10 and 11, would you? True story, all right, so if we graph uh, negative, 3x plus 5. You're a real peach, Nathan, just so you know. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah. 1, 
That means you're just really, you're just, you're a great, you're a great kid. Sit there and. Uh, what's the slope? Oh, I screwed that up, huh? I'm just fine. This was awesome to have Nathan sitting there flipping somebody off. Oh, there's another teacher in the room. That's classy. Oh, dang it. What's that? Okay, so hopefully you guys have the uh, graph drawn. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, what am I doing? This one has a uh, negative slope, so it's going down. Uh, and then this one over here um, has a negative slope and it's a fraction. We'll start at four and go down. I'd rather you didn't. That's generally considered to be rude and inappropriate. Um, so for number 10, what's the point that we're looking for? 3, 5. Is 3, 5 on that graph? Is 3, 5 on the graph of number 10? No. So what that means is 3, 5 is not a solution to that equation. If I plug in 3 for x, I do not get 5 as an answer. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, plus 5 is negative 4. So 3, 5 does not work. What is a point that does work? Negative 1, 8. Okay, yep, I like that. And what did you say, Talia? Uh, one, two. 1, 2. So we're supposed to put these on the graph. Here's negative 1, 8. And here is 1, 2. Okay? All right, how about number 11? Does 3, 5 work on this graph? No. Uh, what are a couple of points that do? 5, 1. Oh, I don't like that very much. Oh, no, you're right. So I did my graph wrong, huh? No. Yeah, I did my graph wrong. What's that? I should. Um, I'm just distracted by his behavior. Not yours. One, two, three, four. Down one, two, three. Over one, two. Okay, so we decided that uh, three, five is not on there, but you said which one, McKenna? Uh, five, one. Okay. That's this point right here, 5, 1, and 0, 4. Good. Like I said before, the x-intercept is, or the y-intercept is always a uh, easy candidate. Okay? Okay. Uh, all right. So this is a little bit of a review back to the arithmetic sequences, but uh, you guys got this. So there's three different ones. They all start with 17 and end with negative 7, but they're different sequences because there's a different number of numbers in between. So I don't know if you guys remember this. If you guys could put your phones down just for a brief one more minute. I know we had a distraction there. Uh, Matthew, uh, if I could get your attention back up here. How many times am I going to add a number to get to negative 7? What? Twice? Three times. Okay, so I'm starting at 17. I'm ending up at negative 7. How far up or down did I need to go? Uh, 17 minus 8 is only 9. I'm going down more. Oh, okay, you guys have the answer. Okay, so it goes down 8 each time, right. And so what I was getting at is from 17 to negative 7, that is uh, negative 24, and negative 24 divided by 3 is negative 8. So... Because there's one, two, three times that I have to add. Yeah, three jumps. Um, okay, so those missing numbers would be uh, nine and one. Okay. Uh, how about the next one? This time there are... Oh, we got to write the equation. Oh, sure. So what is it changing by each time? 
negative 8, so that's the slope, that's what goes in front of the x. And then to figure out what the y-intercept is, I have to walk this back. What would be the number before, yeah, the number before the 17 would be a 25. So it would be y equals negative 8x plus 25, okay? No, I appreciate your enthusiasm. It's fun when you know how to do something. Uh, McKenna might want to punch you in the face, but, you know, that's up to her. Okay, uh, how many steps do I have to take on number 13? How many? 12. So I'm going to do a total of down 24, and I'm going to do it in 12 steps. How much is each step? Because uh, negative 7 minus 17 is negative 24. So that's uh, negative 2, right? So 15, 13, so it's gone down by 2 each time. And you said the equation is what, Matthew? Good. All right, and then the last one of these. It's okay. No, that's fine. I'm just trying to get this wrapped up before we leave. Um, how many steps does this one take? Six. So if I go negative 24 divided by 6, that's negative 4. So 13, 9, 5, 1, negative 3. So what's the equation, Matthew? Okay, so it says each of the sequences above begins and ends with the same numbers. Would the graph of each sequence represent the same line? No. no. Good. Excellent. Okay, and different y-intercepts too, yeah. Disagree. Uh, no, because the y-intercept is the number that comes before... Uh, 17, yeah. Uh, okay, if you graphed each of these sequences and made them uh, continuous by connecting each point, where would they intersect? What points do they have that are the same? Uh, 1, 17, and also, oh no, because the negative 7 is at a different place each time. Okay, yeah, good. So it all crossed at 1, 17. So they all have that same point. Okay. Nice job. You guys did a good job. They should be gone more often. It's worked harder without me than 